Hello boys and girls. Uh, this video as well as already the last three videos that I made are an elaboration on the subset concept. And this video as well as the next one, um, we're going to discuss the characterization of the notion of subset or sub object, as well as the characterization of general logics inside of a topos, i.e. at the category theoretical, arrow theoretical um, concept of a logic and how things are set up that you can make logic in a category, what that means. Um, and so for that sake, this video is going to be a, a re-evaluation or elaboration on some of the, the weak axioms that we discussed in the video on uh, the axioms of mathematics that I did three weeks ago, right? In that video I talked about propositional logic axioms from a constructive perspective mostly, um, predicate logics and uh, the, their axioms and the set theory axioms and of the, I don't know, 10 to 15 uh, set theoretical axioms we discussed there, I'm going to pick out a few of them and few them from this sort of class uh, notion angle where there's this correspondence between sets and um, and predicates and in particular um, subsets and predicates right so for example um, you know you have the natural numbers and you have the even numbers in them and so the even numbers are both a subset but they also directly correspond to the characterization of even numbers in the natural numbers, right? So there's this interplay. Um, okay, and so naturally um, this relates to the power class or power object or power set as well. This is going to be uh, a major role, especially in the next video, where it is uh, generalized to the toposphereatical setting and um, also characteristic functions again like uh, there's a, a lot of videos that I want to make um, the, the video after these two would also be about characteristic uh, functions or rather subset notions how they differ especially from a constructive perspective okay um, I will uh, then in this video where we are still more uh, on the axiomatic set theoretical side um, not yet uh, mention all the relevant reference internal logic um, that I have lifted here, li uh, listed here. Um, but uh, I will uh, mention them more in the second video. But suffice to say, uh, at the end of the second video, at least, we are going to understand the commutative diagram that defines the sub-object classifier. This is sort of a goal we want to get at, at least from this set theoretical uh, perspective, right? Okay. Um, so uh, that's it. Uh, let's jump into it. Um, first off, and this is also holds for the second video, um, keep in mind that a um, first order characterization of sets, first order set theory, um, however strong, is generally a collection of axioms that characterize this binary membership predicate, right? So. The, the point is that we have a first order logic, we have a domain of discourse of things that we quantify over, where we can say for all or there exists these the things, and these things, of course, we call sets. Um, and the axioms all concern this is element of relation, where on the left and right side we can plug in any of these terms, any sets. Um, and this is a binary relation, so there's, there are two slots, and uh, it's interesting to think what, uh, for example, a characterization of a category looks like or, um, you know, more specifically of a group or something um, where we are maximizing the concatenation. Like if you view the concatenation as a function, then it's one uh, operation that takes two uh, elements, arrows in this case, and returns a third arrow. Um, you might also write... Uh, this is a predicate in that you say f concatenated with g equals, um, 
particular age, right? Uh, then this would be then um, a statement about free errors. Um, and um, when we are uh, like in this video going to end up talking about uh, membership relations between elements and subsets of a given set, for example, um, then uh, it's always good to to like think about it. what is actually the dom the domain what that we are talking about. Do, do we talk about the domain of all sets, um, or do we talk about membership within a, a particular set? Um, I emphasize that because when we're then uh, going to characterize uh, set theory in an arbitrary uh, topos, right? The, uh, category is something that you can define in terms of arrows, but then it turns out you can also do logic in there, or talk about something that looks like a set theory. Um, then uh, it's good to, to see then there the differences. This is a little bit similar to when you do type theory, right? Uh, if you have a term uh, being member of a certain type, then it's not a member of another type unless you really have like set up your uh, your type theory in such a way that there's such a thing as subtypes and so on. Um, so these are this this subtle differences between these frameworks that uh, you should keep in mind when trying to understand the differences or uh, similarities between. Uh, these concepts. Okay, but this uh, just a, a note up front. Um, again, in this video, um, we are like trying to emphasize this passing between predicates and sets, because eventually in the topos, uh, we're also going to have then the the, the situation that that uh, with objects uh, which in certain topoi are just going to be sets, but we also uh, speak of logics and to understand why that works out, it helps to understand the relationship between sets or subsets and uh, predicates as well. Um, so okay, uh, we start with two uh, predicates that are unary predicates. So I, I write P or Q, but you should uh, here for the start think of them as depending on X. Right? I switch a little bit between these notations um, like either explicitly saying of x or implicitly saying p uh, q depend on x or vary with x um, the advantage of the first of, of doing it like that um, is that uh, syntactically is a little bit uh, simpler than like having to to introduce the syntactical framework to to have this uh, dependency brackets so that's why I sometimes prefer those. But uh, on the other hand, for, for clarity of explanations, it's sometimes better if you like explicitly denote with these round brackets or this, this is something that depends possibly on X. But okay, I hope, hope this is not too confusing. If you read something like this, then keep in mind that P might actually vary with X. Um, okay, so this is the notation that I have for introducing um, a concept and here what I do is I take two these predicates right and um, while for propositions right um, something that we might classically think of having a truth value uh, of course you're familiar with this implication arrow um, here I define another sort of implication right so here we might say P impl implies Q um, or we like uh, maybe a, a, a good reading for what's going on is P is more specific than Q if for all uh, X, for all elements in the domain of this course or for all sets, um, P of X uh, implies already Q of X. Um, I hope it, it makes sense uh, why, why this is actually sort of an error from uh, P to, to Q, right? So if it's the case that when for any x, uh, it, it uh, having the property p also means it has a property q, then in some sense there is possibly more x's that have property q than have property p, right? This is more specific, like any x that has p also have has q, um, but there might also be other elements that do not have p but but still have Q, right? So in that sense, P is more specific. So for example, um, okay, 
boring example, but um, if a number is uh, a multiple of six, then it's also a, a multiple of three, right? So for example, the number, um, I don't know, 18 <laughs> is three times six. Oh, um, yeah, it's three times six. So uh, it has this property of being a mul multiple of um, of six. But since six is itself a multiple of three, uh, this also implies that uh, this number 18 is also a multiple of, of three, right? Or uh, take, a, I don't know, 12. 12 is a multiple of six. And then it's also a multiple of three because you know, three, uh, three also goes into six. So uh, being a multiple of six is a more specific example uh, property than uh, being a, a multiple of of uh, three in that sense that the, the one implies the other. On the other hand, uh, the number nine is a multiple of uh, three, but uh, also but not a multiple of of six so uh, a more restricted number of <laughs> natural numbers is a multiple of six than our multiple of three and um, I choose this notation here um, the subset with the with the prime um, because of course as you see already here this directly then translates not a relation between predicates but a relation between classes or between sets right so uh, to take this the example that we had uh, just above uh, the the set of natural numbers that are multiples of six is a subset of the set of natural numbers that are multiples of three and really I could go on and define the subset relation of sets in terms of of uh, this relation right I would just take P for P I take X element of a and for Q I take X element of B and then we see um, that this relation is a particular uh, case for a very particular uh, predicate, namely this simple predicate here. Um, okay, and, and in this way, you you should read uh, um, p and then subset prime q actually as, as uh, p implying q in the same sense that this arrow is points from from p to q, right? Uh, and then actually, uh, if you then um, actually speak of errors and on the on the uh, topospheretical side on the category theoretical side. Then this relation here, the subset relation, uh, actually like manifests in in a, a notation that ha has an error pointing in the right direction, so to speak. Namely, um, it's clear that if A is a subset of B, then with this uh, trivial injection, uh, you see that no. For every um, element in A, you can map that to an element in B by just taking the, the same element there. Okay, so uh, what I want to highlight here is that the, the like subset or for se sets or classes or subset for uh, predicates, as well as this injection or this error, they all point in in uh, the same direction. Uh, I guess in you here on, on, <laughs> on for you it points in this direction here. Um, so. Um, right, so keep that in mind, right? So the subset relation A is a subset of B is, is like an error pointing from, from, from A to B. And uh, at the moment I'm, uh, I'm reading, for example, uh, into core algebras because I'm interested in uh, semantics of uh, object-oriented uh, classes in, in, in programming and uh, there is this guy, uh, Bart Jacobs, that you might know, um, com computer science guy who does heavy category theory. Um, and if you come from this standard uh, math background, then these things might be a little bit uh, difficult to read because he really uses implications uh, like that. And then it says, you know, uh, a set is a predicate on a subset, and then you have these arrows, and then the point sort of in, in, in the wrong direction, and you get confused. But this is like important once you pass then on to the area theoretical um, uh, nomenclature where you basically just speak of injections or as they will then be equivalent classes of monomorphisms as we will see in the next video. Okay, uh, I, I go slow, but I suppose um, 
can't hurt. Okay, now we go uh, to the axiom scheme of separation, or if you want to keep it more constructive, predicative separation, right? I have this video um, that I made uh, two months ago where I talk uh, for an hour about impredicativity. I also talk about set uh, builder notation there a little bit. I also have a, a, like an, an unpopular video on set, theory, uh, set builder notation. And in this, in, like, if you are really interested in the axiom sh uh, scheme of separation, which you should be, uh, then also I really I recommend watching the impredicativity video because uh, I also highlight some historical developments and um, what's going on with this set. In any case, it's important for us in this video because it's the tool that grants existence of subsets. Um, and um, it also ties uh, sets and subsets to predicates in a very explicit way. Okay, so uh, let's recap. The, I, I formulate the axiom scheme of separation or predicative separation or bounded separation if you want to um, be a little bit more strict at on uh, regarding the predicates involved with these parameters um, as they do on, on the uh, Metamath website. Um, so for all set parameter or you might also just say for all sets x um, and for all predicates that may or may not uh, be from a restricted family of, of predicates the axiom is the statement it says there exists a set which uh, such that for all sets y y is in set exactly when y is in x and uh, the uh, property holds for y. So you might again read this phi as um, phi depending, varying with y. Okay, and so this, uh, this separates out subsets because um, if a y is in set, if a y is in this set, which is granted to exist here, then this means that y is also in uh, uh, y is also in X, so this set is, is uh, by definition almost uh, a subset in that sense. Um, and uh, but you know it it's, it might not be like the full subsets or the empty subset, but whichever elements Y are in this subset depends on this predicate. And here, like given any set X, we tie um, the subsets that exist, the subsets of X with general predicates. And this is also the, the entry point. And one of the uh, reasons I make this video in Outlook of some other videos I have um, planned, that uh, things get complicated if your logic is complicated, right? If, for example, you have a higher demand on, um, on, on truth values of your predicates, um, and it's, all, it's not all just binary, or you have some proof relevance and so on, then via these axioms, all the complications that you might have with uh, the logic, with these predicates, might translate then to problems you have, for example, with, uh, regarding decidability with uh, subsets. So that's important to highlight. Um, okay, and but okay, now let's uh, let's go on from from that. So here we have uh, stated this axiom, we adopt it as is, and then we introduce some more notations, right? So given a set X, and now I use uh, uh, the capital letter, this is just as I, I took it over from the predic, uh, from the axioms video, um, in the remainder of, of this page, I will talk about capital letter X and capital letter Z. Um, given, an, uh, uh, given an already a set X and some particular uh, predicate, call this P. So for example, here, this was a, a parameter that works for a scheme that works for every predicate. But now we have a set, particular set X, let's say the natural numbers, and we have a pre particular predicate, let's say multiple of six. Um, and then we informally, you know, introduce the set builder notation. I talk about this at length in the set builder notation video. Um, but uh, Keep in mind, at the bottom of it, we are just dealing with first order logic plus membership predicate is element of, and nothing like curly brackets exist. These, all these statements, 
translate to some uh, some uh, statements and propositions as I explained in the set build notation video. Okay, so we have this notation. Um, we take all y's, of course, that are in X. Um, this is corresponds here to this this clause, and um, the, where the, the property holds for y, right? And then we might also abuse notation and. and now this is a term here, and this is a, a property. We might also you know, have a kind of a property, type property of, on both sides, but you know what it means, right? This is just very common notation for, for uh, in, in both cases. Okay. So, uh, but now, um, you know, uh, there is this informal notion, like at least in Simon Frankel, this informal notion of class, where you, you basically, um, speak about uh, any predicate, no matter uh, there being a, uh, like the axioms granting the existence of a set that um, holds all the elements for which the predicate holds. Uh, even if you don't have the axioms to do that, you, you speak of the, 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 this collection that corresponds to the element for which the predicate holds as a so-called class. Uh, these are the, then the objects, uh, you can think of them as n just not being part of your quantifier. So if you say for all X or for all Y, then this just goes over actual sets and doesn't go range over classes, for example. right? And so there is this correspondence between predicates and classes. They are essentially the same thing. But since some um, classes are also sets, right? So some some uh, properties indeed, uh, correspond um, to to sets in that sense, you can think of the set theory as a sort of restricted higher order uh, logic, where uh, technically you only have one type, you just have sets. Uh, but since uh, the, the sets um, can also be read as, as predicates, if you say for all sets, then in, in, in a certain sense, you also say for a certain class of predicates, right? Um, okay, and, and now let's think about what the, this axiom uh, that would mean if we were to express it in a sort of, uh, just in terms of predicates, right? So here we, we go back. This is the, this is the, uh, the set that we, we adopt, uh, the, the axiom for sets that we adopt. And now um, if we think of uh, each set uh, in terms of its corresponding properties, like this, the set corresponds to the predicate which which cuts out of, from the universe of this course exactly those elements which fulfill the property, then it would go something like this. So um, for all um, for all x or for all uh, uh, predicates that are sets, and for any other predicate, so this this x corresponds to the psi, and then for all other predicates. There exists uh, another set. There exists another property, such that for all elements in the uh, domain of this course, this new um, property or this you know this new set uh, is characterizes exactly uh, those y for which uh, psi holds, like the, the the elements that are already in X, as well as psi right so you might stare at it for a little bit i put this in quotes because of course we we, we um do first order logic right we don't say there exists a, a property but um if you could just like um as a like gedanken experiment of classes uh, translate this this statement what does it say in terms of the underlying predicates and it would say there's a uh, like there's a property such that the property is really just the con conjunction of these properties, right? So on the one hand, you have the property X that determines a certain elements in the universe of this course. And then you refine it by being more strict. You say not only must these elements be in X, but they also must have the property phi. And you do the conjunction, you put an end in between. And so you, you, you get something out of it, which uh, is probably stricter than the individual parts, right? Unless, of course, this is just a, a trivial statement here. But as soon as this phi varies uh, on x, 
the axiom really just says that you can build a conjunction in, in, in a way, right? You can, you can con consider intersections of uh, sets of properties. Or intersection of classes is probably a, a good way to, to view it. Um, so from that sense, the separation axiom is some, something simple. It's, just, it's cutting things out. It's, it's doing the in, it's building the intersection of these sort of objects that you have. Um, okay. So uh, that was that. We were go going to do, do the same sort of thinking for, um, for the union in the middle, in the second. Um, but let's introduce some more notation. So um, I'm going to use uh, this top symbol um, to denote the predicate uh, y equals y, right? And we have a uh, first order logic with equality. So we have already adopted axioms that say um, for all elements of the universe of this course, they are equal to it themselves. This is the reflexivity axiom. Um, and I'm going to make use of that um, in that I introduce this, this notation, like this is a predicate called uh, top uh, that depends on, on, on y, but in reality, extensionally speaking, this is always true. Just the, the trivial true predicate. I just introduced this here as notation here. Um, and with that and separation, for example, given any uh, set uh, A, um, if, for example, I, I use this trivial predicate for phi, then um, I separate, separate out from A, A anything and I just get A back. So, for example, I have this, this relation, right? So, this is just a, a, a trivial note, but we're going to make a, a more serious use of the, these trivial predicates in a second. Um, and then, of course, you know, we might put the universal quantifier over that, then this will be. Uh, yeah the uh, proposition that is always true right we bind the y in this predicate uh, and here maybe confusingly I, I use the same notation right this is the predicate this is the proposition this is the thing that varies with y this doesn't vary with y anymore because the y is bounded and then for both of these the predicate and the proposition i, I might add a negation um and uh, in this way get the the, the bottom the bot uh, like the predicate which is always false and the proposition which is always false. Okay. Um, so, okay, I, I want to highlight here that uh, this um, axiom is this formula there. And this, is this is not a naive comprehension. And again, uh, I discuss these things in, also in the in predicativity video a lot. This is um, not a naive uh, comprehension where I just turn any property into a class, but here I I start out with a given um, set parameter x. So I, I need already be a given a, a set. Um, here's something uh, something different. So let's formally um, introduce a new notation v, which is going to be like a symbol informally denoting the universe of this course. But again, it's not like this is it's not going to be a set, and in that sense, it's just notation. Um, and we, in the same way, um, do comprehension over the whole universe, right? We, we have no axiom that grants comprehension of the whole universe, so this is just notation. But in this way, um, I would uh, formally get something that uh, is the class of all sets, right? So the, the top um, element uh, corresponds to the property or class or, or, or um, collection that has everything. And uh, once I have that, uh, then I can write, for example, y of, of uh, v. And y of v, by our definition, literally just says y equals y, right? This is, this is just true. Like for, for every set that I have, um, it will be in this universe because this statement in my notation just corresponds to the statement that y is y, which is true biological axioms. Okay, uh, I'm not going to use this in this video, but I pointed out um, just firstly to emphasize that that uh, in something like Zemelo, Frankel, uh, set theory, there is no such global set. This is just really a class and remains just notation. As opposed to other uh, set theories, 
where classes are also formalized and then you can speak about V as, an, uh, as a thing uh, in your logic. Um, but also because the, this, uh, the symbols top and bottom uh, also correspond to extrema in, in a certain lattice of sub-objects, right? Um, which is then relevant if you consider various logics as they arise in, uh, in topos theory or just in, in other, like in general semantics, like uh, hating semantics of various logics. So I found it worth including here. Yeah, okay, and then, okay, this is then very simple, like uh, having um, the separation axiom and, and possible some other uh, mild axioms, we can do things like like intersections, right? We have already like here suggested that in from a pro property perspective, separation is sort of just saying that we have the, the possibility to intersect properties. And uh, here, um, this is realized with this new symbol also. Like here I define, this should, should also be a, a colon here, I suppose. Uh, let me do that like this. So, um, where you define the intersection of a set A with B as the subset of A the, for which it's true that the elements are also in B, right? And uh, you might also write this in, in class notation, this would be this, and indeed if A and B are sets, then your set theory will generally prove that the intersection is also um, a set. And then we, we might even introduce more notation, right? I use the notation not with the middle bar, but with these commas, where we talk of these really finite sets and um, characterize, like if I, if I write this statement, for example, I'm really just writing this statement you know, for all uh, sets, if they are there, then this property holds. This is like a, a characterization of the, this new notation. I highlight this also because when we are going to talk about power class, for example, then this will look the same thing. We have, we'll have this notation. P of, of A, and uh, this then really translates, this statement really translates into this statement, right? Um, okay, if you ca characterize this finite set like so, then of course you can also then, then classically for sure prove that all these elements are in it. And so here you pass from this equality relation to membership relation. I think it's simple enough. Okay, so in the same vein that we, we discussed about uh, separation, we are also now like trying to view um, the union. Um, and I already see like, uh, sometimes I use the Greek letters and um, so I lose the capital uh, Latin letters. I should have maybe li be a little bit more consistent there, but I, su I suppose it will not lead to too much confusion. Anyhow, the also generally accepted axiom of uh, union is for all sets X, um, there exists a U such that for all Y, uh, if there is a set such that Y is in set and Z is in X, then Y is also in U. Okay, let me break that down a little bit less formal. So we think of X as a, as a set of sets, of course, you know, in, in something like, uh, like if you have a set theory with regularity or set induction, then yeah, these will be uh, sets of sets. But in particular, like, going uh, again back to the, fi the this finite example, right? If, if X is this set containing these two sets here, right? So disregard this symbol, uh, the unit symbol for a second. This thing here, I cannot mark it. Uh, this set uh, from here to here shall denote the uh, set X. And the union is just a flattening, right? The union is just removing the inner set brackets. And what you get is the set containing A, B, A, C, and by set extensionality, this will be just the set um, ABC. So classically, that will literally be just this set, right? And so um, with that example in mind, let's reread re re this, this axiom. For Xs, this is a set of sets, there is a union, this is the flattened version of, of X, such that for all elements, if there, for all for, for sets, for all sets, if, uh, this, this set Y is an element of a set of X. This is what this is here, right? So there is an element, 
this is for example this um, of x such that y is in it then this element for example a would be one no, for a there exists this set which is in in x as well uh, then this element is also in the flattened set of y um, okay now i'm a little bit careful here with setting equalities because you know i like to speak of the constructive settings where where uh, all the things might not be a priori decidable um but in any case you don't have to worry about it if you believe in binary truth and then this union would just be would just be literally a okay and now let's translate this again um uh, in in terms of of classes or in terms of uh, predicates or properties right so since the this union is an operation on a set of sets as we define it here right this is the this union operation is is of course introduced as this operation which passes from x to u um this is how we characterize it i have not like uh written the definition symbol here but um this is similar uh, characterization of notation like here um since this this u this union passes from a set of sets to another set um if we take um x to, to correspond to the predicate p here right the elements of uh, of the set x are exactly those objects in the universe of this course that have the property p then um, since the union operation also gives a set uh, this in this uh, uh, reading that we want to do here the union of this property should also give you a, a property and they use property and predicate interchangeably here. Um, so what would this correspond to? Well, here is a translation. An element Y has the property union P. You know, basically this is if it's if it's two two steps down, right? Uh, uh, element Y has the union uh, the property union of P if there is this in between uh, property Q. This corresponds to an, a, a Z. This is like an in-between property here um, that holds um, y and such that q has itself the property p, right? So hope you see that here. This y, for example, would this situation would be true here if if this is x and this and y is a, then um, there is a set, this set of a and b, that holds a. And this set A and B is also part of this bigger X. So this is the translation. I put it again in quotes here because here this 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 existential quantifier over Q um, that um, we don't like formally have in our first order theory where we talk about sets. Um, but this is what it, what it logically like corresponds to. And again, um, when we are going to talk about uh, the topoi, then the objects are going to take the roles of set, of course, right? The, the uh, topos, uh, like this, the, the category of all sets makes for nice topos. And uh, there the objects are also just the sets. And um, logic in that sense uh, is a logic of a predicate logic, um, a higher one um, and mirrors exactly uh, what we do here, like uh, this, where we pass from, from sets to predicates, there we also uh, interpret these objects um, or errors into these objects as uh, prop, uh, predicates and so on. You will see this in the next video. Um, but uh, I, I hope the, the idea is clear here. Um, okay, and finally, this is the, the last uh, point that is set theoretic before I, I close the video and leave the error theoretical stuff for the for the next video. Um, here, we might now like consider a set theory which has some existence axiom. Maybe it says there exists an infinite set as is usually done in uh, Timelo theory and so on, or a plain existence uh, axiom that just says there is some set um, for which it is itself right the there exists a set x such that top of x holds uh, or the uh, explicit uh, axiom that says the empty set exists either way uh 
given such a, a set E that exists, um, we might now, uh, with separation, get the, the empty set out of it. We say, oh, given the set which exists, we take all elements out of it for which uh, uh, the bottom uh, predicate uh, is true, which is never true, so that corresponds to the set uh, for which, which uh, we can we have that uh, cannot have any elements. Um, and then we can go on, we have the axiom of pairing where for any two sets that we have, um, the plain pair is also a set and then we might form the pair of the empty set with the empty set and by extensionality, um, writing two zeros uh, doesn't bring us anything. So this is, would be the singleton. Now we have zero and one and this then we can use to uh, start talking about in the set theory about characteristic functions and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, like this is preparation for for what's what's coming next. So I, spoiler a little bit. I'm going to talk about uh, the translation of all these concepts into error theoretic notation, and then I'm going to make use of this element zero and one. Talk about um, this uh, object of truth values and how that uh, then generalizes. Okay, um, and I, I want you to note also that that. Um, we have this global membership predicate that I talked about at the beginning of the video. But what we also have is um, for any given set, we can form uh, the membership relation between elements and subsets in that set. So if we define any sort of um, pairing or uh, like ordered pairing, like here is the uh, Kuratowski pairing, the standard one. Um, the pair I just mean something that where we can project out the elements, right? The, the category theoretical um, characterization of pairs is definitely the morally correct one. Um, in set theory, we model that, for example, like so. Then we might uh, form then and here. Uh, no, let me actually. Let me actually. Yeah, okay. I can, of course, rewrite this. Like here, I again introduce a new notation because while previously I had, sorry, I had uh, terms here and I had also like this this property here. Um, now I even have uh, like a functional expression in a sense. Like I, I build stuff up inside of this left bar. I could also write, uh, should I do that now? Let's leave it at that. You know what it means, right? Um, so this is, these are all sets which happen to be pairs such that the left projection is Y and the right projection is Z. Okay, this is how you would translate it. But uh, so we can, if we can build pairs, um, we can, uh, def and for a given X, then also define the set, right? This is the set of all pairs of X and Z, where X is an element of Z and, and uh, Z is a subset of, of X that, um, makes for a set which just has these these pairs and as such is a relation, right? And a relation, this is the general definition of a relation in set theory, it's a set of pairs where we consider <clears throat> the relation true for two elements exactly when um, the this pair of these two elements is in, the, in this relation set. And as such, this um, this set corresponds to the membership predicate on X, right? This is not a global membership predicate that you make use here, of here and also implicitly here, um, but this is this localized membership predicate, right? And and this thing uh, we can uh, characterize error theoretically. This has, a, of course, some some a little bit unwieldy. Uh, diagram. I mean, the diagram is not not uh, all that bad, but involves a power power object anyhow. Um, but this is something which we can write down here very easily, and um, also we'll be able to characterize as soon as we can uh, like characterize the subset subset relation. And as I have like already hinted at. Uh, here, subject relation have to do with monomorphisms so or injections, which is easy to characterize. Uh, category theoretical as well. So this is how we are going to to uh, get to we are get going to get this this uh, a local membership predicate into an 
an arbitrary category that has nice properties, Cartesian closed um, and sub-object classifier and, and some limits. Um, okay, yeah, so uh, that's it for this video. Let, just a little bit of a spoiler. So here we have, I want to emphasize that this, um, like we have not defined it in this video, but once we have the, the power um, set, power class defined like so, then of course this, this relation is um, a subset of this, this product here. And now the only thing that needs to be done is really like translate the power operation into the category for radical framework. And this is going to be done essentially with this characteristic function. And this is how this, this, uh, this commutative diagram comes into play. <coughs> okay, I will uh, link um, this, this file in, uh, in the, in, on the bottom of this video and continue to discuss it in the next video. Take care.